Hello, welcome to the world of fantasy film. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to use. You can make mobiles, you can make flowers, Christmas decorations, butterflies and jewellery. It's a craft to delight the young and the not so young. One of the really nice things about the acrylic creations is that you can do it in a very small area. You can do it in the kitchen, the box room or the living room. Wherever your creative instincts are happy to flow. There is a starter kit called Fantasy Film. Let me lift the lid and you can see the materials we're going to use. There are four tins of acrylic paint. I'll come back to those in a moment. The strands of 26 gauge wire are what we use to form the structure of our pieces, whether it's holly, butterfly wings or jewellery. 26 gauge is the most suitable, but heavier gauges would make stronger shapes. We need heavier gauge wire for support structures such as stems of flowers. This is florist tape which we use for binding components together. An alternative tape is gutta percha tape. Can you guess what these are? These are stamens to use in flowers. And last but not least we have silver glitter. This would add a sparkle to any piece. Six useful templates have been pressed into the plastic packaging. There are three on each side of the pack. As you would expect, all materials can be bought separately when you start or when you need to replenish stock. Many simple shapes can be made entirely by hand, but however, if you're making lots of them, then you need a pair of pliers, a pair of scissors, and wire cutters. Last but not least, we need a piece of oasis and a piece of polystyrene. The most important material is the acrylic paint. It's a plastic resin which we use to make a plastic film. You cannot paint pictures with this paint. We're going to start with the opaque paint which creates a porcelain effect. They come in a good spectrum of colours. We have a red, a yellow, a white, a green, a blue and a black. There are many more and all colours are intermixable. Fantasy film was originally made for children with special needs, but all children like to use it, especially big children like me. If you use the lid of a starter kit as your workstation, then you won't get any spillages on the table, but just in case, have a newspaper. However, if you do spill any, leave it to dry for 10 minutes and then peel it off like this. Now for the enjoyable bit. I'm going to build up a corsage like this one. And in doing so, I will cover all the basic steps which I use in my creations. Take your wire, make a loop, making sure you have enough wire to hold on to. It can be useful to picture your loop as a fish like that. We have our loop, we make a couple of twists by just twisting the loop back on yourself, which will give you a firm hold there. That is then ready for the painting, but at this point you'll find that you'll have lots of little creases. I tend to run my fingers around the inside of the wire in case there are any creases, but if you like, you can use a pencil just to pull the wire but I myself prefer to use my fingers. It's most important at this point to take out all the creases because if you don't, the wire will bend where the crease is rather than where you want it to bend. It starts to get creative at this point. I'm going to make a petal like this one that I made earlier. You'll see that the petal is in fact a film of paint which stretches across a wireframe. We're going to shape the petal like this one and the way we do it is to take our forefinger and our thumb near the top of the loop. Squeeze very gently, we're just making an indentation here, not a point. We 
we're going to make it look like a little Russian doll or the little Kelly doll and that's how it looks at the moment. Very flat and uninteresting. Right, this is the shape that we're aiming for. We need to get a curve just like that one and I'll show you how you do it. You don't bend the wire because it will look just bent. You take the wire between your forefinger and your thumb and you very gently roll it around and you'll get an even curve all the way through. Having made a petal, we're now going to turn our attention to the leaf. We start exactly as we did before with a, with a loop. We make it slightly larger because it's a leaf. This is where I bring in what I call the washing action. Some of you may not know what this means, but it's when you've hand wash some clothes, you then have to wring the water out. And that's the action we're looking for here so that we get an even sweep. You take your thumb and your forefinger holding the bottom of the loop fairly tight. Take your other hand, again, your thumb and your forefinger. And what I want you to do is I want you to twist in opposite directions. So you take your right hand away from you and your left hand towards you or whichever way suits you. Right, we'll start that and I'll show you how it's done. Watch, here we go, there you go. And as you can see, you've got a lovely loop. Don't worry if you've overemphasized your leaf at this, at this stage. All you have to do to take the curvature out a little is take the bottom tightly in one hand, the top in the other, and pull ever so gently. You don't wish to take the curve out altogether and you'll see that's evened it out a little.